Right, so it's time for another video update uh, on the Bearhawk, and uh, here it goes. So, um, I think last time I had the Bearhawk on a wooden frame, and uh, that worked really well because that meant that I was able to uh, have the firewall off. It was suspended on the wooden frame, which meant that I didn't have to have the gear legs on, and that gave me the opportunity to cover the gear legs, and etc, etc. So I then got to the point where I wanted to put the firewall back on and do some more work on it which meant the wooden frame had to come off in order to uh, put the firewall back on and that meant that we had to put the gear legs back on it. So that happened probably about a month ago now and uh, it's now got to the uh, stage where once again I, I want to take the gear legs back off. There's nothing more to do on them. Um, and I'm going to, this afternoon, I'm going to strip all the cowlings off it, take everything off, all the boot cowl, the firewall's going to come off, I'm going to lift the aircraft up, take the gear legs off, take the wheels off, and uh, basically what I'm aiming towards is uh, covering the fuselage. There's still a little bit more work to do first, but I want to uh, lower the wooden frame down so that I can work up high on the aircraft without getting up on the ladder, because it's, uh, it's a pain in the butt, to be honest. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what's going to happen today. Now, the progress that I've made, uh, probably over about the last five or six weeks, really. So... First thing is I had to uh, reinstall a different tray for the ELT. The, the one that I built initially just simply wasn't strong enough. Um, that's worked really well. I've got the antenna in there. A um, couple of people have questioned the location of the antenna inside the fuselage, but I've thrown that on the forum, talked to a few radio guys, and uh, I think it should work quite well. Incidentally, the ELT tray itself is bolted right through the frame. Uh, there's two bolts going through lugs on the frame there, so it should be very, very solid. Had a group of guys around uh, during the week and uh, they're all aircraft builders and one of the suggestions that I got was regarding the static uh, ports here, if I come a wee bit close you can see them. I had these lines in uh, the other way so that the lines actually dropped down and someone suggested that I put a gooseneck in them to stop any uh, water egress. I thought that was a brilliant idea and it was very quick and easy to do. Another change that I'm going to make once I drop this down and put it on the frame I had, um, early on, to practice my riveting, I had made up this uh, antenna mount up the top here. I don't think it's uh, really strong enough. It's, it's got quite a lot of movement in it, so I'm going to remake that. And I'm learning about ground planes, and I think I need one up there, so I'm going to use that as a ground plane as well. Yesterday, I did quite a lot of work on the, uh, the skylight frame up here, and uh, that's pretty much ready to go. There's a little bit more to do. Um, but I'm, uh, I've, I've modified, so the, the actual frame itself is a recent modification from the factory. I've modified it further, and my goal is to use one sheet of acrylic right across the top. So um, another thing that I did recently was with the gear legs here, you can see I've installed the brakes and uh, put the flared fittings and the AN fittings on the brake lines. That's dry fit at the moment. It fits very, very well, and I've done both gear legs there. Today I'm now going to disassemble that and move on. Another thing that I did recently with the uh, fuel system here is the transdu transducer, uh, the fuel flow transducer mount. That's all finished now and very, very happy with how it came out, but it did take quite a lot of work, and I think I went through at least three different iterations before I found one that worked. Um, you can also see up in here you've got the, uh, the fuel pump, pump there, the gas escalator, the fuel uh, quick drain, which protrudes, or actually it doesn't protrude, but there's an opening in the, ca um, the tunnel cowling for it. That's the uh, bottom of the fuel selector. And over here, uh, if I hold that just there, this here is the park brake um, valve, and very happy with that location. What that means is that everything under here is mounted within the one bay. Now, the the firewall, um, sorry, the tunnel is going to come back to here, and then I've got inspection ports on the side. But in reality, the whole lot can be taken off in about two or three minutes, and that gives me full access for maintenance. So very happy with how that came out. This week, I'm hoping to get the uh, instrument order into dine on, and I've been giving a lot of thought to how that's going to mount up in here. So today, I'm going to remove uh, all of the boot cowl and that's going to be stripped right back and once I lower the aircraft down a bit I'm going to have very easy access and my plan is to build a uh, avionics rack in the back there. Now the panel that I've got already 
does hinge. It's all disassembled at the moment, but it hinges forward. And my rough plan is to ins install the throttle um, mixture and pitch and cowl flaps here, and then have the panel um, made so that it can fold over the top of them. It's gonna be a little bit difficult. So that's, that's roughly where we're at. Um, also some more progress uh, just in the last week is I decided to split this cowling here, the, the boot cowl, and um, now I can undo the screws uh, and in about two minutes remove that. And that gives me very good access in here to service the brake cylinders and the brake lines. So very happy with that. We also mounted the uh, knack events and they're, they're bonded to the inside, came out really strong. And uh, if, you, if you take a look in here, that's the inside of the knack event. I have dry fit it with the tubing. The, the actual airflow outlet is just gonna sit up here on, it, on each side of the instrument panel. It probably would have been better if I'd have mounted it a little bit further forward um, on the other side of that fuel line, but, but it's okay. And my plan is to get some Kydex panels and uh, finish the, the interior, the forward interior with Kydex panels and that will hide every, everything uh, in, the, in the side there, in, in the footwell. So it's all coming along very well. I spent quite a lot of time yesterday. I took these uh, controls right out. The problem with them is they're very free laterally for the ailerons, but in the pitch they were binding. I tried putting, uh, putting little shims underneath and all sorts, and in the end I took them out and then I could begin to see what the problem is, was that this mount down here is, is not uh, square. It's on a slight angle. Whenever I did it up, it pinched the bushings in and compressed them together, and that was giving me the friction. I've now opened those holes out a little bit uh, larger and allowed the, the uh, AN3 bolts to, to sit on their own angle, or AN4s I think they are, and um, that's taken most of the friction out, so it's pretty good now. It will actually fall forward of its own accord at the right angles there, so pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, very good progress. Uh, one other thing that I did, uh, you can see down here. So um, I decided to put these panels um, extending back from the lower boot cowl. Most beer hawks have fabric up to here. And that leaves a problem with where to terminate the fabric. There's nothing in there to terminate. Whereas at the back here, this door frame runs all the way down. And once I, once I remove these panels, I can terminate the fabric on that uh, door frame and then screw this back on over the top. So that fits really well. This then screws on top. It all goes together uh, like a Lego set. So it's very happy with that. The only issue was what to uh, bolt this onto underneath. And you can sort of see that um, I've got some screws in here. And if I look on, on the inside, you'll be able to see what I've done, is I've put these little uh, Adele clamps in place with tinnamons on and drilled through them. And that's worked really well, but it does mean that I'm going to have to put holes through the fabric. So I am considering turning these around and having the holes higher up, and that might give a, a neater finish. And then I can trim along there so that that will remove the overlap with the holes. There'll still be overlap on the fabric, but there won't be any holes through the fabric. And I got that idea from another guy on, on the Bear Hawk forum. <laughs> Um, he, he was thinking one step ahead of me. So that's, that's the other side down there you can see. So I'll probably redo that. It's about a 15 minute job, quite easy. So that's where we're at at the moment and uh, I'll probably do another video in, in the next few days and that um, hopefully will show the aircraft sitting down much lower. So uh, actually, uh, as an aside, Tuesday this week, so in a couple of days time, uh, there's a place just down the valley about 100 meters from me that um, does uh, self-storage. They've got self-storage units and I've rented a 6.3 meter uh, unit off them. Those wings are 4.8 meters. They're going to fit in there perfectly. So my other job this afternoon and tomorrow is to put caster wheels on the wing crates and uh, I'll lie them down flat, put them on a car trailer and I'm going to put them into the self-storage unit. Keep them nice and safe while I'm not working on them, while I finish the fuselage. I'm going to put a lot of other parts. The propeller will go into the self-storage unit. I'll put the empennage in there while it's waiting to be painted and just other parts to, to get them out of the workshop and it will give me a lot more room to work on the fuselage. So that's planned for uh, Tuesday, a couple of days from now. And uh, I'll do another video update uh, in about a week's time. Cheers.